Hey guys, this is Zach with Team Covenant, and this is the Weekly Tournament Report, and I'm joined by Steven. Hi, how's it going? It's well. You played any tournaments lately? Yes. Um, I played some Netrunner recently, and it's still just as good as I ever remember it. Also played some, some Thrones, and spoiler alert, it was rough this week. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off the store championship victory, uh, I was Won quite, a store championship. I was confident in my ability. Were you and, on the same deck? Yeah. I was looking good. Everything was great. And then uh, we'll get to that when it's time. But Okay, excellent. But first, Before that, we have some special announcements, right? Yeah, so announce. recently concluded the 2014 Winter League here at the Covenant Store. Really big deal. It's like a 16-week period. Players fought it out. And at the end of the day, one player from each game stood on top. And uh, we haven't announced or revealed it at all what the prizes are for winning your game. We just said they'd be good. And... Uh, I want to say thanks to all the players that played in all Absolutely. the tournaments, uh, yeah. not even knowing what that end, end thing was, and just for supporting and growing the local it's community like and stuff. It's like people enjoy the games anyway. Can you believe it? It's crazy. You don't Why have to do have $1,000 purses to have a great game with great communities and people that want to uh, just experience that game, you know, experience the rush of it. It's all about, I mean, it's all about bragging rights. We're just we're we're all just trying to best each other uh, and and be the best that we can. So, on top of those bragging rights, we we thought it would be nice to give a little kick in the pants there uh, for the winners. So, you want to start it off? Let's start off with Star Wars. Yeah. Tuesday night, six thirty p.m. We stream every week, and uh, there's there's some really great games that happen there. Obviously, we're the the home store of world champion Dennis Harlan, and he actually did take the league. He won. Uh, it. He was the number one guy. What we have here is a custom. Uh, focus token from our force token set on the the back of the token it says WL14 which is for Winter League 2014 but on the front is maybe one of the best things I've ever seen <laughs> it's uh, a little Dennis head it, it is the likeness <laughs> of Dennis uh, on the, the focus token so because he won the Star Wars uh, League 2014 he'll be getting a full set of focus tokens with his dome on <laughs> the front of his tokens completely custom one of a kind set Really phenomenal. So every time his uh, his units are attacking you or he's putting focus on you, uh, he's actually doing it. I mean, it's his head that's right there. So uh, anyone who gets the pleasure of playing against Dennis uh, now or at a Worlds or Nationals event uh, forthcoming, be ready. Be ready to see not only his face across the table, uh, but right on, on the, the table. table. <laughs> Fantastic. So that's uh, I could sell these things, man. Yeah, that was a good pitch. That's uh, that's Star Wars. So you want to go ahead Across and with the table with the old Netrunner winner yeah, and prize. By These look great on the they table, do. by the way. Yeah, I haven't I mean, spread I, them out. I like wouldn't mind just Can little heads. It's like, like a that. little Dennis army. <laughs> a thousand Dennises surrounded us. Um, in the same vein, we wanted to honor uh, our Netrunner champion, who is Joe, uh, famous for Zach's interpretation of his name in Say song. Say it ain't Joe. Every time that uh, he's brought up. Um, I love it. He was the winner of the uh, Winter League 2014 as well. And we thought it would just be really cool. Uh, Joe is notorious, at least right now, for playing uh, Grendel and uh, loving the Bad Pub. And so we thought we would honor him by uh, giving him his own Bad Publicity token, which you can find. He will be getting five of these. That is the uh, full set of Bad Publicities that we offer in the data tokens. And... Not only does it provide a nice little change of pace uh, whenever you're looking down at these tokens, but more importantly, it really sells the fact that Joe is probably about to kill you. <laughs> um, it's a very signature face he makes. It's a very signature Joe face. Uh, he's at ease. He's devious. He's smiling. He knows that uh, whatever you do, he's got two counters on that Project Atlas, and you're going down. So uh, we wanted to honor Joe with that. So he's getting five bad publicities. Congrats to Joe. And uh, these are always going to be awesome to see on the table. Talk about corporate overlord Joe, man. He's right there. Never has it been more clear to me. That's, that's pretty phenomenal. So congrats again to Joe. Um, just, fan I mean, tons of points for that right He was fantastic he killed it in that right And, uh, yeah, I hope you like it. So um, go, go on with, uh, with the next one. Last up uh, is Game of Thrones. We stream it every Thursday, 6.30 p.m. And uh, if you watch the stream very commonly, last round, top table, you see a guy named Matt Phillips. Um, you see him in a lot of our videos. He was the winner of the league. Congrats again to him. We had him on the show a week or two ago. And 
we had to put our brains to work a little bit on this, but what we, we ended up deciding on to, to commemorate his achievements <laughs> uh, is a custom wooden house card. Uh, not house card, I shouldn't say that, but a custom wooden card-shaped item. <laughs> uh, <laughs> With his likeness on it, uh, and House House Phillips is a reasonable house. House, house that has Phillips, that's true. With, that's with true. It's House Phillips. Uh, it says Winter League <laughs> champion Matt Phillips at the Covenant Store in the year of 2014. It's also got his likeness on it with a very with a crown themed crown. A very interesting crown. Um, beautiful crown. Yeah, it's fan. I mean, can you imagine flopping that down and that's your house card? That's your house card. You're gonna be putting power on that every time you you collect a power. You get to look at your own face. Uh, as a would-be king, which I think is is really the dream it's of goal, most right? of you us. Become the yeah. king. king of Westeros, uh, and it's it's a classic Matt pose and Matt face too. Um, calm, collected, a, jo- a little jovial, you know, kind of happy, smiling, but ultimately you know, trying to kill you, you know, trying to trying to win there. A lot of killing going on. Right? Well, you know, that's why we play. <laughs> so again, congrats, to Matt. It's, yeah. Uh, I hope you really enjoy this. Congrats to Matt. Congrats to Joe. Congrats to Dennis. You guys will have these waiting for you here in the store if you're watching. Uh, if you are at home and you're like, man, that would be really cool. Why don't you, you know, relocate to Tulsa if you have to? Simple. If you're in no. Tulsa and you're watching relocate. this, you, you should freak out because you just found out about us and come into the store and play. And uh, you may, too, have your likeness on any number of weird things in the future. Awesome. Which we hope to provide. So I, I want to know a couple of things here, too. Uh, we still have uh, Matt Phillips was the overall champion. He was. Uh, we still have a prize coming for that that we are not announcing yet, but we will not see. Not yet. It's close. And um, just because we did this for this league, uh, we're going to be doing something awesome for the winners of this the summer league. Who knows what it'll be? But we are not going to announce it. It could be a coat, time. you know? You never know. coat with your likeness on it. I mean, this is the first step. It's the tokens, but we're not just going to always do tokens. We might do tokens. We might not. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Got to play. Got to pay to play. Again, congrats to these three players. These will be waiting for you, and uh, thanks for showing us all how to play these games. Well, let's see who's in the lineup for uh, this league, shall we? We will. Go with me on a journey to Tuesday night uh, last <laughs> yes. week. Take me there. I'm, I'm there. Uh, Star Wars Living Card Game the Tournament, 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, if you were catching that on the stream, you would see uh, none other than uh, Zachary Bunn here. Winning the tournament. Yep. So, I'm reading this right now, and I just looked over it real quick. Uh, Breach of Scripture Deck pretty, Force. Pretty Key things led to your victory. What did you learn? Uh, you're just playing Sith Control and Sleuths. Period. Right. My answer on that is the juice. The juice. The juice, the juice, the juice, and Kindle's mistakes, which is always a blessing, I'm sure. Yeah, he really should have beaten me. <laughs> uh, both games, I think he had, he had a chance, and just... He knows now. So he knows how to do it now. Yeah, I, I don't think he would make that mistake again. What was the? Can you give us the crux of it so that we don't make it at, at our at home? You didn't give us any clues. Um, I want to say, I, is it, I want to know something before we go too far into <laughs> okay. this. So I just got back from Dallas. I spent yes. the weekend in Dallas playing two Star Wars store championships. Um, so since this tournament, I've literally played like ten or eleven rounds of Star Wars. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, but I want to say, this is just me. Wanting to say what happened, um, it had something to do with uh, like putting the tactics in the wrong place. That's and, the classic mistake, and, and it ultimately just, I make that mistake often. I also have made that. Mistake. So don't do that. Don't misplace your tactics. Uh, shout outs that Zach would like to give one to Lord Vader, uh, one to the Executor, and then one to the Tulsa LCG players. So. Cheers to all of those people. Tell us about uh, tell us about your your store championship weekend, would you? I, I, Down in I, I, Texas, yeah. we saw our old friend Grant Huddleston. I know that. Absolutely. Uh, played in two events. A lot of really great guys down there. Had a really good time. It's awesome getting to see new opponents, and uh, there was definitely a variety of decks being played. Way way more different, more different uh, than here and at our store championship. A lot of sleeves were at ours and Sith control. Um, but uh, first one, I, I made top four, got knocked out of the top four by none other than Grant. Nice. And uh, he actually lost in the finals to a guy named Olivier. Nice. He won that event, and Grant you, got second. Do you know what uh, what decks were going on there? Was there anything fancy or um, special? Olivier was running uh, his I, most notable. I didn't actually get to play against him the first day. Um, okay. I never got paired, never, never saw him. Uh, but I do know he was running, uh, I think, a, a mono Imperial deck. Whoa. Um, and... He was beating people really fast. 
So was it a rush like destroy objectives? Yeah. Style, then? So like on his second turn, he would only blow up an objective. So like super. Are we talking like super no, no, laser just, blasts just, or just just okay. dudes? I'm just dudes just for checking. days. All the imperial, the capital, shit, like that stuff. Anyways, what it t- tended to look like is turn two, it's first turn he can attack, he blows up an objective. So that on turn three, he can blow up three objectives and win the game. Wow. Normally, the problem with a rush deck is that you blow up three objectives and the dial's not at 12. Yeah. Like, you, oh, the dial's at 10, and then you lose because you used everything to do it. Uh, but he basically tries to set it up, as far as I can see, to win on the third dark side turn. Um, and I, I know uh, in the finals against Grant, it went to a game three. And both all the games were really close. But uh, when Grant was playing light side, he was actually using uh, the exact same list I was running for the Sluice against that Imperial deck. It was hilarious because they're both just sprinting. Oh, yeah. It's like no one's even blocking. You're just throwing stuff and hoping that you draw more uh, wow. objective damage than the other guy. So it was really wild. Um, I think the one game ended with a dial at 11. Wow. And like dial would have gone to 80 million on the next turn just because of how much damage was out. So... That was the first tournament. Second tournament, a lot of the same guys. Stores were like 30 minutes apart. And uh, it ended up being me and Grant in the finals. And uh, Grant actually won. Nice. Uh, I actually am not terribly surprised. Yeah, no. Grant's a good good player. Turns out he knows how to play him some Star Wars. <laughs> so, um, yeah, shout out to them. It was really great to play new people. Really cool community. Really cool group of guys. And I, I look forward to playing against them again. They're in our region. So. Excellent. I'm sure we'll see them. Excellent. Well, thanks, Texas for hosting uh, us. Awesome. Shall we move on to uh, Netrunner? Let's do it. Uh, ben did some... Uh, well, do you want to get the scores? Let's get the tallies. Let's get the Star Wars tallies. Uh, okay, Star Wars tallies right now. Uh, first place is me. Uh, second place is Dennis. Third place is Kendall. Fourth place is Jeremy. And on down from there. Um, I'm only a couple points ahead of Dennis. Dennis is only a couple points ahead of Kendall. It's early on. There's a lot of... Going back yeah, and feeling forth. it out. It's time for somebody to make their move. Yeah, and it's the kind of thing. The way the way it's set up is you really need those achievements. Yeah, and you don't want to be counting on the achievements at the very end. I know no. last season at the very last turn I was trying to get one achievement, which was a sixteen point swing because you get Woo! the tenth point from the achievement and the fifteen bonus for getting all ten. And I'm not gonna have that happen again. Okay, um, but if you're after the achievements, a lot of times your decks aren't quite as good. It's the problem. So then you just lose points. Uh huh. It's the problem. So be careful. Um, but it keeps it fresh. Are we good? Point. Are we good for Netrunner? Let's run the net. Anything else for Star Wars? I mean, that's it. Top okay. top ten shape. Bookkeeping up. taken care of. We'll keep rolling. All right, guys. Well, let's move on to uh, Netrunner, and uh, we had uh, we had some traveling this weekend, right? A couple so guys from the area went to I think Arkansas to play. Yeah, and, uh, I think they did pretty well. Yeah, Ben Ben Ruggles actually he's a local player. He actually won. Ben Ruggles won Congrats another on store that. champ, yeah. man. I'm telling you guys, watch out for Ben. He's a feisty He's player. been making it to the finals a lot. He's Ben Ben went from good player who can sometimes surprise you to great player who sometimes surprises himself. <laughs> uh, what a way of saying that. <laughs> so Joe wins the Wednesday tournament. It's me, I'm surprised. Yet again. Uh, Say it ain't Joe. Joe is just a wild man when it comes to Netrunner. Uh, brief description of his deck or force, and I love that he's doing this, and I'm playing against this a few times, and it is wild. HB Cerebral Imaging. The deck is here. It has arrived. That is the one where your credits are equal to your hand size, vice versa. I've seen Tim doing this, too. Yes. He called it Slow Fast Advance Score Efficiency Committee with two biotic labors out of hand. So essentially, blue level, green level, all the card draw, all the money, and you draw up like 50 30 cards. cards in hand, 40 yeah. cards, yeah. So you have like all of your cards in your hand, which means you have a ton of biotics and a ton of money. So you play your two biotics, you score an efficiency committee. And then the interesting thing about shipment from Sand Sand, which is the MBN splash in this deck, is it says it's a zero cost double, place two advancement tokens on something. Whereas efficiency committee, when you use it, says you cannot advance cards. But placing advancement tokens is not advancing cards. So, so you can. So no, one efficiency awful. committee, you can remove three tokens to get three, new, three more actions. And you, as long as you don't advance cards, you can score out all so of your... So you can just play the thing, put the two on it, score it. And then we're talking about archive memories, Vitruvius, like, get all this stuff back and just that's continue awesome. to do That's awesome. I it. mean, that's really cool. It's it's not typical it's cerebral everyday imaging. HB. Yeah. It's cerebral imaging. It's a style. I dig it. I, I know I, was, I played against Tim using that deck several times, and it's the fun, funniest thing I've seen was me just sniping his agendas. Yeah, It's like he has one hands. agenda out of 20 cards. <laughs> and he's just like, are you... Like, I think it was three or four games in a row. I get to seven in like five or six turns. 
just yeah. from like just from like it's the thing is it's usually it. open now there's a version of this deck that can be run that i haven't seen run which is hp servo imaging same a little bit less money and draw because you have to sacrifice some of that up front but way bigger and crazier eyes and I could see that being a thing too, because you have all these ice options in hand. You can choose the perfect one for the moment, place it down, and you have the money to basically res whatever. Like I've seen Janices and stuff like hard res these yeah. days, no problem. The Corp has so much money, it's insane. If they want it, they can well, have and it. And the amount of card draw on this deck and money, like at some point, I think he had 40 or 50 credits and like account seven does nothing. Yeah. Like it's just like. Yeah. Drop in the bucket. Just nothing. You're just wasting time. Uh, so it's it's a really cool deck. Um, I'm glad to see that Joe was able to win with it. Yeah. He also said this is a silly deck, uh, but not silly enough, apparently. Uh, and then he was running Kid on the other end with the Source and Chicana, basically trying to do complete anti-scoring tech. Takes more advanced mechanics to score agendas. He also said it needs infinite MU in parentheses. Um, so we'll see the key things that led to the victory there. He said the Corp deck is good, which I agree with. Uh, HQ is all random with 20 cards in hand, which is totally true. And it's just kind of hard to dive into HQ when you're looking at that many cards. Um, I mean, it's basically, they are making their hand what R&D was. Yeah. Except, it, I feel like it's even worse. Like, one random off the top is different from, like, this weird shuffled pile of, of hand that they can even manipulate in certain ways. But uh, HQ is all random with 20 cards in hand, and then uh, I said Kit is passive-aggressive. Uh, you basically sit on the source or Chicana and get paid. Uh, so I think it's really solid. I love that that there's so much room in this game to explore these kinds of alternative strategies sure. and to make them work. I think that says a lot for the design of the game that you can have so much variety that is all quite relevant. And like a kid deck that sits on the source and or Chicana is so annoying. Like so annoying like in bn it's just like ah oh, man yeah and then it's like okay well i'm gonna have to i can't scratch a hand anymore i'm gonna have to set up a remote and it's like well the first one's gonna be a code gate and then maybe i have a tinkering in hand or something and i've got my full rig set up by now because yeah. you've got to wait for so long yeah and once shaper gets set up they got the magnum opus probably it's just like it's a game changer super um, easy I, I remember talking with joe about this a while back and just being like stopping them from scoring out of hand like right now scoring out of hand is big yeah it's important very few corps actually have servers they set stuff in advance and score later um so being able to stop them from doing that yeah literally stops them from doing the entire plan of their deck it's done um so it, it's interesting I, I i'm curious to see how big of a deal that becomes if every runner was doing that i mean in the place we'd be sitting we'd be sitting on our hands would just be in trouble yeah yeah it'd be an issue um, he said, what did, what did Joe learn? He said, Kit needs money, use Opus, and get extra MU. He said, it looks like he needed some more MU. Um, and I, it looks like maybe he wasn't using Opus in the original. Now mm. he's saying, I'm going to put Opus in and some extra memory. And then shout outs he'd like to give. All the regulars get a shout out. Uh, the Yeti for the awesome shirt, okay. Y E T E E. Uh, Twitch chat. Shout out to Twitch chat if you guys are, are members of that community. Thank you for chatting and, I guess, entertaining or critiquing Joe. And he said, Sam, Sam Salad for a virtual tie. Which, in Netrunner, virtual tie is totally reasonable. Because <laughs> it's all in cyberspace. Get it? I do get it. Oh, My it's mind is so blown. funny. Uh, that's what, what we got on the Netrunner scores there. Uh, current Netrunner scores. You may be... Surprised to know that right now number one is Sam Southard. Really? Number two is Joe Freeman. Two points behind. Uh, number three is Hank Lloyd. Number four is Stephen. Big Woolley. Bank. And I'm so number on. four. You are number four. Well done. Yeah. All right. I'll take it. Uh, well, uh, Sam. Sam v Joe. Whew. That's a wild card there. Because Sa didn't Sam win the tournament? Uh, tournament. Event? Yes. Yes. And then he sure did. Yeah. I remember. I remember getting owned by him. As it happens. Uh, well, what about Thrones? Let's kick around Thrones a little bit. It this is, is the big story of the week, actually. It is. It's a big deal. Uh, the winner is someone we haven't ever had as a winner we've talked about here, and that is Josh Forbes. Yes. Uh, from what I gathered, this was his Amazing. first tournament win ever. Amazing. Uh, Huge and, congrats, and it, it was no fluke, either. It was just such an abusive deck. All right. You want me to give the description of the deck? Yeah, go You go can talk about it after I actually yeah. see. Yeah. So he's, he said he was running Stark, no agenda. He was. Uh boost opponents strength to the nuke with breaching the wall rob stark and northland keep also king's pavilion with non-kneeling characters is hilarious yeah 
Yeah. Both both directions actually. Oh, oh. you got more strength now, and then uh, I don't need to attack. That's cool. Yeah, Winter Balin's not really happy about his deck idea. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it was you a don't problem. Even play it. Did you play him on accident? Uh, no, not on accident. Well, I played, played him to it. win challenges, but that was before any of this stuff was out there. Oh, man, that's the that's <clears> thing. But uh, feel free, and then I'll give the rundown. Right. Uh, what are the key things that led to your victory? Running good cards, that's the truth. And understand the cards and mechanics that make it work best. It's an uncommon build. What did you learn? Testing and tweaking are key, and any shout-outs? To his wife for being patient with him and maybe letting him come on Saturdays. So thank you, Josh's wife. Thanks for letting thank Josh you. come. He's a Josh's privileged ever. wife. You are a true blessing and a saint. Um, all right, so let me run down uh, this deck. This is a Stark No Agenda uh, Agro-y deck. Right? Agro-y. So as as, a, as new players come in and new players playing Stark, it's a classic. It's absolutely classic progression. <laughs> but a lot of them don't make it as far as Josh has. Sure. You start out with Stark, and you're like, ah, oh, big dudes, killing stuff. And then you hit a Valor, and you lose every time. Every single time. Yeah. Um, and then your second thing is like, oh, Siege of Winterfell. Now I got the deluxe box. I'm going to Siege of Winterfell. I'll get some more big dudes. But this time I'm going to win fast. This time I'm going to win fast, so that the Valor isn't that big of a deal. And then they get Valored, and you, and still, lose. you still lose hard. Um, and then they have, you have a bunch of power that your opponent then takes and wins the game with. Um, and then, and then, it, where the Stark players go from there is a very telling thing. Um, some there's might few, there's a few branches off that tree. Some might stay with uh, Siege and start to include things like uh, at the gates and then outwit to to fight the Valor, or they might include like a Twist of Fate. They might start throwing in Heron Hall and some other card draw cards. Uh, you know, obviously your Guards of River Run are going to be in there. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Now, what Josh did is he went Stark No Agenda. And no agenda gets you access to summoning, or summon from the Conclave, uh, which is amazing. That yep. may as well be card draw. And it also gets you Mage, which allows you to put locations in, pop in or back in a hand, which can get you your Heron Hall, get you some card draw effects. Uh, and then, more importantly, just playing smarter. Uh, recognizing that I am dominating the board right now, there's no need for me to play out five more dudes to then lose them to a Valor. Um, Josh was also doing Outwit. He was at the gates first turn, grabbing the maester, that stupid maester with that, that crest. And then he was, actually, I, I wasn't valoring. He thought I was second turn I uh, at the gates, and he outwitted. He canceled the maester. And, and it, yeah, and then he did it. And, and I was like, man, that actually is, is bad for me because now You're I don't have my save on yeah. the board. And this is a Stark You're deck a that's save. murdering me. Yeah, yeah and, and I've got dudes, he's boosting my strength. Rob comes out, he's starting to murder. I need Wendy on the board. Can't get him, so it's actually maybe a better deal for him than if he had outwitted the Valor. Although outwitting a Valor is usually game over. But the key thing that was happening was standing my dudes with Frozen Outpost, which is on the defense, devious. To yeah, kill you. he attacks. I'm like, oh, I can, I can block that. Uh, and then he stands my dude, and then he removes him with Northland Keep from the challenge because you can remove a character with higher strength from a challenge. So this is the crazy thing. This is a beautiful machine that he's created. Like this is a new thing. This is not just a fluke deck. Yeah. This is like a way to play Stark that is troublesome for all of us non-Stark players. So just be aware of that, everybody. Josh Forbes the one said, it, said it first. This is a very cool concept and a very good deck, and it blew up my store championship winning uh, Greyjoy deck. Blew it up. It's, a, it's only one week too late. Isn't that a shame? Yeah. I wish he'd been running this on that's Saturday. That's often how it works. Yeah, that's often how it works. You, you win a, a big thing, and then like you just get slaughtered from then on yeah. so the right place the right time that's crazy well that's awesome again congrats to josh and uh, maybe it's a name we'll be saying a lot more huge of huge congrats to josh he played really well made a few basic uh mistakes like not knowing that balen was turned on by having more locations which is a funny statement um i love having more locations so turned on um but so I had turned him off by having less locations, and he thought that he was still on. I took me a minute to get there. So, <laughs> so, he, so good. So he was using, uh, he was planning on using Rob Stark's effect, but then realized he couldn't because I no longer mm, had the plus two. That'll mess things up. Yeah. But uh, so I tried to get out of the rabbit hole that I put myself in, but uh, overall it was just a fantastic play. Just overwhelmed the board. Just, just really a, good. Yeah. So congrats to Josh. Uh, let's see the stern standing, shall we? We shall. Uh, looks like what I have here. Which I hope is accurate. Um, is Matt Phillips is number one? 
Matt Phillips, number Matt one. Matt Phillips, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. He does things. Uh, Jacob Kern is number two. Jacob Kern. Ben Ruggles is number three. And Tim Bunn is number four. Tim Bunn, number four. Yeah. I would believe that. Um, I would believe that very much. So that's about all that we've got. So we had this weekend Lord of the Rings. And Paint Day. And Paint Day. Yeah. So and no tournament to talk about. Well, we also, let's not forget that we had the draft on Friday. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. You let's, win that. Yeah, hit me with let's it. Let's talk about the Netrunner draft. Yeah, I almost missed it there. Um, Netrunner draft is phenomenal. 100% of the time, amazing. Who won? Uh, Joe? It was a tie, I think. Get Joe out of here. No, it was a tie. There was a true tie between uh, Joe and somebody else that I cannot remember. I just always think Joe because Joe wins those kinds of things. He does. Um, but I remember we had to split it. Uh, Chris O'Neill, maybe? Hmm. It's okay. You don't know the right answer. Matt Garrett? Leland? I'll say everyone. It was Matt one, Garrett? It was Leland. One of, one of eight people. It was Leland. It was Leland. I think it was Leland. I'm almost certain it was Leland. How Leland certain? and uh, Joe split, okay. Okay. which is awesome. Um, so, long story short, draft is amazing. It's everything that you've come to love and know about draft from previous collectible card games. Same idea, same format. It's a, I get it. It's a bummer that like these are cards you've already seen. There's not new rarities to be collected, but it's great for filling in a lot of gaps. Um, there's some awesome cards in those draft pools, and at least uh, on our end, you know, we're talking about doing some cube stuff and and mixing it up. No matter how you do it, play the draft format. That's it's what crazy. I would say. And it's it was one of hilarious those, watching you guys draft. It it just changes the game. It brings a, a huge breath of fresh air, and like any limited format. It makes you look at cards differently, sure. and it makes you better at the game because you're not stuck in old paradigms, and you allow yourself to look at what what a data hound might be capable of outside of your little box that you put sure. it in. Um, and when I can get rid of your only barrier breaker with the data hound, all of a sudden that's that's pretty significant. Especially in draft, that's <laughs> pretty that's significant. Crazy. Now my wall of static is like a thing that you have to deal with, like a fim or a crypsis, and it's like, oh, this is awful. Yeah. So yeah, never draft amazing. I, I drafted a horrible deck, but I had a great time. Uh, horrible deck. I was wondering, I mean, you, you, you were going down a route, and I was curious I, to see if it worked. I went down a very direct route, and I was basically seeing what would happen if I did uh, very little, which turned into zero in the run ice. Um, the problem with that in draft is that you will cause a lot of complications for people, but there's only they only need to score two agendas when when the game is when you said and done. Threes, yeah. Most of them are three pointers in there prior to requisition for me at least, and uh, you know they might have three tags, but they just scored three points, and now they can just keep hitting R and D. And you don't necessarily just have the, next. the punishment for it either. Yeah, and the most important thing that I realize is that if you can't in the run, your remote servers become very questionable, right? So it's like I need to score this thing out five pointer like i need a five advancement thing so i'm going to put it behind a row of five ice none of which ends the run <laughs> so a wily runner who realizes that nothing is going to stop them they might take two net damage or brain damage and you know lose uh, a couple and win of the game yeah but then they just win yeah. so uh there's some lessons to be learned there I will very say. cool yeah um and then saturday lord of the rings phenomenal game i I've been thinking more and more about Lord of the Rings every day. It feels like we played. Uh, Robert and I messed around with some with some of the new quests in Isengard, and uh, we actually we got we got the screws put to us a little bit. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I've never heard that. Well, we were expecting it to be more or less just kind of a yeah, yeah, yeah we're explore game, the mechanics, we'll be, yeah. see what it's like. But it was like, man, these Dunguard dudes just they, they just keep coming out, and then there's more of them, and then your threat raises, and you got cards, and then. Well, now my threat's high, and I got all these cards, and you're telling me to draw cards with this thing. And then you put all these locations out, and then they all have plus one threat because I have a hand, and it's a uh, you know it's a tough thing. So it sounds like a lose lose. It is, but Except we were maybe on the time. way to winning, and then we had to pack it up oh. because we had to start the tournament. Mm. I swear that was the game, though. We had it. We tried <laughs> we, to like. We had that thing. We had it. So well, if you haven't cool. got Voice of Isengard, or Lord of the Rings players, uh, get it. It is absolutely worth your time. If you're not a Lord of the Rings player, get it. It is uh, absolutely, it is worth, absolutely your time. worth your time. And if you haven't net runner drafted, do it. If you're if you just have like a couple of a couple of homies and you don't have any place to get draft packs or to do it and you want to experience the fun, we have them on sale on the web store. So if you just want to grab some and host a draft at home, uh, you can do that. And absolutely. You should. Anything else, Zach? Close it out. That's it. Keep a big congrats again to these uh 
Winter League champions. And uh, stay tuned on the live stream. We have tons of videos coming as well. And uh, it's an exciting time for us and for yeah. games. Short championship season is kind of ending, and regionals are about to be on us, and regionals are going to be amazing. It's so. about to get real. Thank you guys so Sounds much good. for watching. See you guys next week.